ghosting is a very, very strange and paradoxical scenario in the sense that it leaves both parties feeling rejected. Both people tend to feel like they are the ones that have been abandoned by the other party. The person who has been ghosted feels that they were not enough, that they must have done something wrong. The person doing the ghosting feels that they are not enough, that they are going to do something wrong and that the only way to spare the other person the reaction is to disappear. And while there can be many reasons for why people ghost, often the cause, the core cause is rooted in insecure attachment styles and avoidant personality disorder. Many people who ghost are people that struggle with the uh, tendency towards becoming overwhelmed or the tendency of feeling anxious in relationships. People often tend to hold to a set of expectations for what social life and friendship is supposed to be like. And when you feel that friendship is a responsibility, a burden, something you have to be good at, something that you have to do for other person's benefit, friendship can become a very taxing experience for both parties. And so what I want you to do is I want you to consider the very expectations that you had on friendship to begin with. What I've found is that friendship is actually not rooted in selfless acts of giving towards another person, but rather of selfish desire for personal expression and connection and validation. That means that friendship is not about trying to be something for another person, but friendship is about a sense of mutual selfishness, mutual self-interest. Friendship emerges when both parties go into a situation for their own benefit, for their own interests, hobbies, and for personal reasons that are their own. And so in most lasting and long-term friendships, there tends to be a lack of desire, a lack of expectation, a lack of need for the other person. We go into that situation simply because we like to be there and because we enjoy being there, not because of what the other person is providing us, but simply because of what we are allowed to be around that person. A while back, I had a friend text me. She texted me something to the nature of, I'm sorry, Eric. I think it's better that we don't talk to each other anymore. I feel like I can't be the friend that you deserve. You deserve somebody that is able to be more uplifting, more positive, somebody that can be nice to you, somebody that can be there for you the way that you need to. I read this message feeling quite honestly puzzled because I didn't have any of those expectations to begin with. I didn't need the other person to do anything for me. And for me, I was completely happy and content to leave that friendship just the way it was. I had not felt bad because she hadn't texted me in a while. She felt bad because she hadn't texted me. I had not texted her. And a lot of the time we tend to hold on to these senses of awe and guilt and shame and obligation in social relationships. And these things can become very difficult to hold. We feel bad because we don't message other people enough, but truth be told, are they messaging us? In a lot of situations, we think that we have to be a certain way or a certain somebody. And whenever those feelings exist, it's honestly very taxing to be social. And perhaps many people are not introverts at all, but simply extroverts that have been trained to think that social relationships have to be taxing, difficult and stressful situations where you have to constantly focus on another person's needs. I want you to consider that maybe you don't have to do any of these things. Maybe you don't have to reach out. Maybe you don't have to give them gifts on their birthday. Maybe you don't have to send them a congratulations. Maybe you don't have to do anything at all. Whatever effort you put in is good enough. Maybe whatever you do is already worthwhile. I had another friend recently talk to me about how they felt like they didn't bring any value to any of their relationships, that they couldn't really provide anything for others, that they couldn't really say or be anybody interesting. They couldn't be there for other people in the way other people needed. They couldn't be interesting, funny, or all the things that they felt like a good person, worthy of social relationships should be. Huh, that's interesting. I find you to be funny. I find you to be easygoing. I find you to be easy to be around. I find you to be considerate. I find you to be kind. I find you to be helpful and supportive. And I find you to be all those things that you don't think that you are. And so often 
a question when it comes to ghosting is, do you really have rational basis for distancing yourself from another person simply because you're not good enough for them? Are your opinions about yourself really representative of that other person's opinions of you? And is your self-perception really as accurate as you think you are? Are you really qualified to think of yourself as a social fraud? Perhaps you are much more worthy of love than you previously thought.